Have you ever wondered what an eight-figure agency knows that you don't? You know, it's not time or money or even skill. You know, so let me ask you a question. Is this you? Do you work 70 to 100 hours a week? Do you work seven days a week with no time off? And if you fail, does your team and family eat? And if you stop working, does everything go to hell? Now let's compare that to them, the eight-figure agency owner. They work 20 to 40 hours a week. They work four or five days a week, and they aren't afraid to fail. They actually even have a budget for failure, and they applaud failure as long as you don't do it the same way twice. And if, you, if they stop working, their systems keep everything running. What you need to do is you need to have the right systems. So here are the 12 systems I use to build an eight-figure agency. And it all starts off with, where are you going? So many of us jump into business by accident, or we just jump into it because we got tired of working for someone else, or we saw a need, someone asked us to do work, and we just jumped into it with no clear path of what we wanted to uh, go through. And one of the most important things in growing a business and an agency is knowing where you're going. What's your long-term goal? What's your short-term goals that are going to help you get to the longer-term goals? I mean, just imagine having clarity of where you're going, like a crystal clear path. You know exactly where you need to go. You just may not know how to get there yet. But if you have that clarity, then you can say no to the stuff that doesn't get you closer to where you're going. I mean, that's very powerful. There's so many agency owners that do too many things and they get distracted with doing you know, the things that are not going to get them closer to their goals. The second system that a lot of people skip over, and I skipped over this for a number of different years, and it affected our revenue for years and years because we didn't pick out who we served. We didn't have a specialization. But when we did, we had exponential growth. Now, it usually takes people a little longer to figure this out. Some people figure it out right away. And you'll start, your income will look like a roller coaster ride and your leads will look like a roller coaster ride up and down, up and down. But when you start getting laser focused and specific on who you serve and finding that specialization, that is the key. And I hear all the time, the common fear is I don't want to scare anybody away. But you are actually scaring people away because almost everybody out there is looking for someone that is an expert that specializes in solving the problem that that they have. You know, how can you relate to an audience and show them you can help them overcome their biggest challenges if you're not specializing in something? And solving a challenge is, is the easiest way to get their attention. That's why it's so important to know who you serve. And the first two things really relate up to the third system. It's about Producing valuable content that helps your ideal audience. The hint is ideal audience and help, right? You should be producing valuable blog posts that people would pay for, for this information. Not just blog posts on company news and new hires and awards. Don't even waste your time on that. You should be doing podcasts. There's not many agencies that are doing podcasts. You know, videos, how to give them the ingredients. Just don't give them the recipe. And sometimes it is okay to give them the recipe. They want to know how to do stuff, but they don't want to do it themselves. And that's why you produce valuable content. So education is the key. So all these numbers add up to 100, right? And actively right now, there's 3% of people looking for what you do right now. I mean, they're looking for your service and they're probably coming to you from the search engines. Then there's 7% that are open to doing work with you right now. There's 30% that are not ready yet. They need to wait, um, you know, give them some time. There's 30% that is unconscious that they have a problem, right? And there's another 30% that will never, ever do work with you. Now, the problem is, is the most agencies are going after the 3%, which is very crowded. Or they're going after the clients that told them no. But the big opportunity is the one in the middle, is educating that 67%. And you do that through, you know, 
capturing and nurturing those leads. I mean, do you have a leads funnel right now? Do you have a way on your website outside of your contact form or your RFP form where you're capturing leads? And then once you capture those leads, are you making them go through a defined funnel, a proven funnel that is going to get you conversations and create those leads and opportunities? That is a huge system. And this system can work when you're not working. Like every day, my clients are generating tons and tons of leads. And they're not doing anything outside of what they've already set up. They're tweaking it and they're always testing it. But it's a constant flow of leads. You know, one of my clients set up this landing page. And it's for people that feel like they're being overcharged with pay-per-click management. So he'll do a webinar to get people in the funnel and he'll send out automated emails to them to get engagement and convert them to opportunities. You know, the fifth system is, is you have to have an outbound system. You know, are you doing events? Are you doing pay-per-click? Are you doing calls? Are you doing direct mail? You have to have an outbound strategy. You know, one of the big things that worked for us is we uh, identified, you know, clients that were sp- or um, prospects that were spending over $10,000 a month in AdWords, we'd actively do a cold call to them and saying, you know, we uh, have a strategy that can help you take that $10,000 and stretch it a lot further and also identify wasteful spending. Would, would you like to hear about this for, you know, we'll chat with you for 15 minutes. We get the meeting all the time. So don't w- rely on just word of mouth and referrals. You need to have multiple like a multi-strategy business development approach. That's why I talked about the inbound a little while ago, and this is outbound. So many people don't do the outbound. I mean, even from creating events and getting people there, huge. Then once you have these leads, it's all about how do you convert more of your opportunities, right? You know, and the biggest thing is, is how do you change the focus to them rather than focusing on yourself? Right? Most agencies just talk about, oh, check out my portfolio, check out my awards, check out my people. Well, there's a problem there. It's focused on you, not them. You have to change that conversation. So now you're not just selling and trading time for money. You're actually selling on value. So one of the things that we did in you know, this system is whenever we chatted with someone, we had to figure out the three eyes. What was their big issue that they were having, right? What was that big challenge? And that big challenge or that big issue that they had, what was the impact on their business? How much was it costing them? And how important was it to them to fix that? And what's that doing is that's selling it on value and you're positioning yourself in a new way rather than just saying, oh, you need a website and we'll make it look really good. We can say now, We understand that you have a lead generation problem and it's costing you a million dollars and it's very important to you. And now I can charge whatever um, we want for that website because it's solving a million dollar a problem. The seventh system is about eliminating the profit leaks. And most people have no idea what this is, but it's really scope creep or underbilling or underscoping. You know, I was losing money on 60% of our projects. I was just lucky 40% were extremely profitable. But when we started looking into and measuring, you know, our delivery, we realized that we were way undercharging. And a lot of times we weren't even scoping the project right. So we couldn't even go to the client and get the money. Or we didn't have the right process in place to avoid scope creep. We didn't have the right process or the systems in place. So seven is a huge, I mean, guys, I was losing money on 60% of our projects. So when we changed this around, our, our profits went skyrocket. I mean, it just, it was unbelievable. Eight is all about streamlined delivery, right? How can you do things quicker, but still be charge, you know, the high, high value that you sold it for? One of the areas that we identified was, Um, taking our PSDs to HTML. And we used a company to do that and and saved us, 
you know, I think close to 20, 30 hours. So we could do more with less resources. Okay. So what can you streamline in your delivery process? What are you constantly doing? I mean, whether you can use, you know, in the next system I'll, I'll talk about, it, it's kind of automation. Like you can use technology to streamline and really look at everything that you're doing and see how you can automate it and use technology. Like for your email marketing or, you know, scheduling your meetings or even your online billing. I used to spend so much time sending out stupid invoices and trying to do collections. There's technology out there that does all that for you. So then I could concentrate more on the direction and coaching the people directly under me and assisting sales. So you really want to look at what you can automate. Then it's all about strategic partnerships. A lot of people just think, well, I, I have partners. They, they send me leads and we, send, we try to send them leads back. This is not what I'm talking about. Now that you know who you're targeting and what you're specializing in, what are other players in the market that complement what you do that are a, strate- a, strategic, a strategic partner? One of our strategic partners was Sitefinity. Another was Microsoft with SharePoint. And we became the best in the world at Sitefinity. And we were really, really, really good at SharePoint. And so they started and we came up with strategies to make sure. And we treated them as a, as a client almost. And we would share the, the um, success stories that we would have with them. The things that we were doing with their technologies. And we would get so much business. You know, when we uh, partnered with Microsoft, I remember they asked us to speak at their uh, one of their biggest conferences for CRM, uh, which was Convergence. I spoke right after Steve Ballmer to over like 5,000 people. So that's a strategic partnership. So what are those strategic partnerships that you can build? Then the 11th system is all about operations. So you can be awesome at sales, You could be awesome at marketing. You could be awesome at everything. But if you don't have the operations set in place, you're toast. You know, who does what? Who reports to who? Who's responsible for what? What's the process that we're going to go through? What's the systems that we're going to have to operate better? You have to have a system for operations. You know, I chatted with an agency that they're a $3 million agency and they have zero employees and they've done this all through having the right systems, especially around the operations and delivery. And then the 12th system is make sure you're investing back into your agency. So many times agency owners are so used to doing everything and doing everything within the agency that you don't think you need to invest back. You know, we had a really big chunk of change that we would invest back in the agency. Invest in our employees, invest in our process, technology, personal growth, everything. You have to invest back. You know, if you like the strategies that we just went through, you are going to love everything that we go in the playbook. From generating leads, capturing leads, increasing profit, streamlining your delivery, getting rid of the profit leaks, how to lead, how to manage a team, how to set up a sales team, how to set up a project team, how to build that culture, operations, build up cash flow, all of that that you need to do. You remember in the first video, I talked about those 12 strategies that you need to master in order to get to the next level? Well, I go deep into the playbook. So make sure you check out the playbook. I'm gonna have a link right below this video where you can have access to this playbook. It's going to change everything for you. So make sure you jump in right now.